43-year-old Christy Sims can't eat, can't sleep, can't seem to get used to her new skin. Uncomfortable feeling. You don't feel comfortable in your own skin because it's not your own skin. She's severely burned arms, chest, and face. But I am disfigured. I've been burned severely. Um, my life would never be the same again. I would never look the same again, ever. Christy says it was her boyfriend, Andrew Fordham, who intentionally robbed her and her two children of the life they once knew. I don't want a lot. I just want to be a mother to my children. I miss my babies. I miss my babies. Sensing an impending breakup, Christy says Fordham tossed a bowl full of sulfuric acid, drain cleaner, in her face. It didn't give me the opportunity to fight for myself. It happened so fast. Yes, I need an ambulance. Okay. Fordham called 911 and said he slipped and it was an accident. But 10 minutes into the call, the two operators trying to help raised serious concerns. Where's the lady burned at? It's on the. It's on What's going on? I'm, I don't know. It sounds like more than Jaina. It, it sounds like more than a slip and fall, too. By the time paramedics arrived, it was too late. A glowing smile destroyed. My face is really, really bad. Sulfuric acid sat on my face for like at least 10 minutes. What I want you to do is go to our website, kiss104fm.com. And I know you have heard me talk about this story of this beautiful woman in Henry County. Kiss 104 FM's midday host, Sasha the Diva, is now leading a movement to get Christy medical and legal help. I am on the move to get justice for this young lady. I am on the move to help her keep everything that she has because she's going to lose everything. Mounting medical bills and not being able to work have left Christy feeling empty. But behind the scarf is something Christy will never lose, her heart. I won't ever stop loving. I won't ever stop believing in love. I won't ever stop having hope. I will never turn my back on God. And he cannot take that away from me. Andrew Fordham has not been charged. He says it was an accident. Christy was in a medically induced coma for two months and just last week, investigators were able to recreate the scene. I've been told by investigators that her case will go before a grand jury soon. Meanwhile, if you're interested in learning more about Christy and help with her plight, go to MyFoxAtlanta.com, click on Scene on TV, and this will take you to Kiss 104 FM's Courageous Christy Drive. Wow, what a, what a powerful story. I mean, she has a remarkable attitude, still has her hope, but yeah. she's lost so much. She really has. I was heartbroken sitting there talking to her, but yet I walked away so inspired. She just, she wants to love, she wants to go on, and she's not going to let it break her spirit yeah. somehow. Now, obviously, she's got to focus mm -hmm. on her continuing recovery. Mm -hmm. How important is it to her in that process that she gets some justice out of all of this? She wants justice, but more than anything, she wants her children to be able to look at her again. Yeah. And that, that is just the saddest thing. <laughs> Funny man Steve Harvey can find humor in just about anything. It's pretty right here, I'm gonna take a shot. <laughs> but there's one aspect of his life he considers sacred and no laughing matter, and that's his faith. The faith part is the core of how I got here today. Faith has brought Harvey a mighty long way. Faith is the belief in things that you cannot see. That's all it is. And I am living proof that faith works because I didn't see none of this. I didn't see, none of this is on a dream board. Harvey experienced many highs and lows while struggling to find success as a stand-up comedian. He says not once did he become discouraged. You gotta quit looking at your life as a series of mistakes. You gotta start looking at your life as a series of mishaps that made you a very valuably experienced person. The peaks and valleys were undaunting because of some of the guidance he received from Mother, a Sunday school teacher who instilled valuable lessons. Her one job in the family was to get her children to form a relationship with God. Harvey admits his relationship with God became strained at times. There were two failed marriages and a few bad business deals along the way, but through it all, he remained grounded. Failure is a wonderful teacher, and my faith taught me that. And Harvey says a few short, prolific words have taught him even more. God. Love.
Mother. Mercy. Father. Strength. Peace. Always. And always, Harvey will have faith in the church, that place of refuge where he finds hope in the simple things, like a good old stirring gospel song. Lord, help me to hold out. Harvey's favorite, a song that's quite contagious and will no doubt hold on to this man of faith. Lord, hey, help me to hold out. You're looking at an old military dog tag, rusty and its inscription soiled. But to the family of Sergeant Johnny Williams, it is priceless. It represents hope. Um, I think there's still a chance that we will find his remains and he will come home. The family received word from the Department of Defense that the wreckage of a military plane that went down in Burma back in 44 was stumbled upon by the natives. Sergeant Williams and six others were on that plane. It's dense jungle, very thick, uh, dangerous territory. You still have like the Bingo Tigers still there. Nephew Aubrey Webb served in Southeast Asia too and knows the area well. The wreckage was finally recovered in 2003. This is his oldest sister. But nine years later, family is still waiting for Sergeant Williams to come home, that well-dressed young man who attended a local church school in Conyers. His parents have since died. Now it's up to his two nephews to carry on hope and carry on the search. I get sort of cheered at, but, um, as service members, we have the record that uh, our goal is, in the event that we should lose one of our members, that the goal is to bring them back home. And there is hope, the kind Sergeant Williams' mother carried in her heart until her death. She died in November of 1976, and she would wash his clothes every so often. My cousin Aubrey and I would take him out and hang him up on a line, clothesline, and uh, she would iron him with an old-fashioned iron and um, fold him back up, put him back in his, in his drawer because she believed he was coming home. The Department of Defense has confirmed that they are actively working to identify the remains. Sergeant Williams was just 26 at the time. They say the process has been hindered off and on by a lack of federal funding. So on this Veterans Day, the family remains patient, resting its faith on a rusty military dog tag buried deep in war that will no doubt shine when their loved one is finally home, sweet home. It just gives me a warm feeling inside, just thinking about it. I'm Lisa Ram, Fox 5 News. Tens of thousands crowded the National Mall for the chance to remember. The Freedom Bell sounded all across the nation, even atop Stone Mountain. They sounded everywhere. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring. On this day, the bells, the voice, the fervor transitioned into the voice of another generation. And so we come once again to let freedom ring, because if freedom stops ringing, then the sound will disappear and the atmosphere will be charged with something else. Dr. King's daughter seized the moment and exuded what her father held dear, the content of her character. 50 years later, we come once again to this special landing on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial to reflect, to renew, and to rejuvenate for the continued struggle of freedom and justice. Freedom and justice are what brought Dr. King to the nation's capital on that hot August day in 63, but it's what festered deep down in his heart that still lingers. Dr. King decided to stray from his notes, address the crowd of thousands, and just dream. I have a dream that one day Poet Langston Hughes asks, what happens to a dream deferred? Fifty years later, a nation is led by that dream's reality. America changed for you and for me. And the entire world drew strength from that example. 